I don't know that they have anything that they could have done differently. And, and you know, listen, I, I guess that was a knee-jerk reaction because I had not seen them there. I didn't see the audition. I had COVID. And, you know, I'm sitting here watching the show where, you know, listen, all kidding aside, there was a lot of dips and, and hills today, you know, ups and downs and people rose to the occasion. Some people were crushed under the pressure. But then when I watched them, um, they're really good. They're adorable. They're kind of dressed. And it seemed like, as I said, a high school, you know, uh, you know, I got out of math class. So we're going to go see the choir or the acapella group from the from middle school perform. And that's what it looked like. And it didn't look like anything to me that was worth a million dollars, even worth being in a million dollar contest. I mean, I, I don't know that that compares to anything that we have been seeing. So that with the knee jerk reaction is ah, like, what are you guys thinking? And meaning my other three co judges, why are they even here? I don't I don't understand. So that was just my little misunderstanding of a level of talent that I think you know, this stage deserves. I think we're all really happy with the performance. We sang our little hearts out and um, we sang with passion and we're just so exciting and we're so thankful that we even got to do it. So yeah, yeah. I don't think we would change anything about our performance. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, we did our best and that's, you know, all we can do. We're proud of ourselves. Yeah, you know, I think we, you know, we, you know, we all help write the songs and our message is just about being yourself and glowing because, you know, it is called yeah. glow and being able to do anything and be yourself without thinking that someone's going to judge you and yeah. you are perfect for who you are. Yeah, we wrote, we actually wrote this song with the audience in mind, with the kids who are watching online and the adults um, just hoping to inspire and encourage all of them. So, Here to represent yeah. the kids of the world. Yeah. yeah. He gave me the standing ovation. <laughs> yes. Oh, you, did you not know that? Or you saw that, right? Okay. I don't know. I keep looking at myself. <laughs> There's no proper term, but you can call it anything you like. Screamo, metal singing, deaf singing, uh, anything really. I would really like lots of people to learn about the music I do. And there's not like many people, there's a lot of people really that do the metal thing. I want that to be more, like there's more people in the world. <laughs> Straight to me, hey, how you doing? This, this pressure here was so much more than the first one, but I loved it. I loved the feeling, it was good. I'm very happy with my performance. I am very, I'm very happy. Um, moving forward, I mean, Vocally, I could have put more on the table, choose the bigger song maybe, but for me as an artist, it was very personal to me, so that's why I chose it, that's why I sung it. Dinosaur. Human faces are so, humans are so hard, you know? I think maybe a dinosaur, um, it would be great, but there's so much that goes into the human face, how complex it is, you know, our ability to kind of understand human emotions and interpret them. It's really engaging for the audience. It really holds their attention when it's hyper real. Yeah. Like you saw Simon's face on Daniel and, <laughs> you know, you can't look away, right? <laughs> I, I keep on double taking him. Right it's now. like a trainer. I'm looking at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I think when it's somebody that is really so well known, the bar is higher because you have to think about delivering on that legacy and what that icon means to people emotionally. And so that's a very difficult thing to do. Um, hopefully we get to that level where people who are fans, they see the performance and they're transported. They're transported to their youth, to great times, to their favorite music. That's an emotional reaction, which is really hard to deliver to people. That's, you know, that's entertainment. And uh, I, I think we're, we have a chance of getting there. I hope so, fingers crossed. I think it'll be amazing to see Heidi and Sophia. And we're also going to bring back one of the greatest rock and roll icons of all time. Maybe, you know, the greatest. And so I, I think that's, that's a good tease, I think. You, you can imagine yeah. a little bit. Yeah, so when we do the rehearsals, we 
obviously like the little choreograph ballet we could practice, but the actual stunts we couldn't couldn't do because we've risked injuring ourselves before the actual show. So we didn't know how that was going to go, not really until it actually happened because it's a one shot deal with our stunts. So, well, the stupid ideas come from can come from anywhere. It's usually we turn like everyday items into into some sort of stunt or an idea we think like would be funny with it. But normally we, we're using items that are laying around the house. So now that we've got a bigger platform, we might be able to access a bigger items, you know, and like take the stunts to the next level with a bit more like, uh, a bit more like production and thought into them. And the other thing we would like to do is, this is the first time we've done stunts on stage as that way, because it's always been videos before, but we loved the idea of like potentially going on tour and taking our madness across the UK, across America, across the world. That's the dream. It was a big thing for me, but like for tap dance, you know, like that's huge. You know, you don't really get to see a lot of tap dance anymore. So to open the show was unreal, but you're right. It came with a lot of pressure <laughs> and a lot of stress, but um, it was totally worth it. You know, when I, when I heard that audience for the first time, damn, I just wanted to get right into it. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> Simon was rough tonight. You know, it was it was a it was a hard night to to please Simon. But uh, yeah, it, it was yeah. At least the audience liked us. Yeah, know? I think who's Simon because <laughs> I love our performance, and this is the only thing for me. <laughs> yeah, I um, you know. It was it was pressure, but I, honestly, you know, I, I wanted to just to make it more condensed and not have it just be kind of like longer and like dragged out. So I wanted everything to kind of hit on like the right point. So it's like, unfortunately, I would want to put more jokes in there, but because of how short the time frame is, it's like I could only do those, uh, you know, ventriloquist challenges and a couple right. other things. So I just had to get right down to like those you know, those wow moments that AGT is about. No, I, um, I made major changes. I came out dancing. So, <laughs> so yeah, that was um, new for me. Uh, and I felt like you had to use every single minute, even in the interviews. It was all about giving the world a show. And I think after watching other comedians, I felt like they put in work too, but you just never know how the world's gonna vote, so. I uh, have everyone else. So I felt immense pressure. Yeah, I, I I felt like that when I saw that Celia didn't make it. I I was like, I kind of like jumped out of my seat because I was just like almost 100% positive that she was going to make it. And, uh, you know, it's it's big shoulder, big shoes to fill, like being, you know, with Terry Fader, mm. you know, Darcy Lynn, they had had such a huge impact on the show. Right. Um, so that made me a little nervous, too. I, you know, Terry Fader, even like he commented on a post about me saying he'd be watching it. So that, right. that puts like a ton of pressure on me. So I was like, OK, I got to got to do good. I couldn't handle that. No, nah, yeah. If some comedian who did something said they were going to watch. I probably, I probably crumble. Yeah, I feel like I can't do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, how we? Right, right. Um, well, I have a, a character uh, in school, like grandmother voice, and I made it up when I was a kid. Uh, it's not my grandmother, but this this one's grandmother inside my head. Um, I would, if if I were to, you know, talk about my dream performance, I would want her to come out and. You know, kind of like this on stage, and then, and then she would play an old record, and then I would sing. I mean, I can do Edith Piaf, and you know, a lot of older singers too, Judy Garland. Um, I would do that, and then somehow I would want like, like, like I said, this isn't a dream world, but like her, you know, like toddler grandson to come up to her, which is another one that I made. And be like, yeah, but grandma listened to these. And then I would sing like, oh, 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 and like all the newer things. It's kind of like a therapy session. Each song when I go into write, you know, I really get to like hash out whatever that emotion is that I'm dealing with or whatever that situation is. And so, you know, if I do move on, I would love to be able to show another emotion.